Callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Whether you're dealing with engineering or technology, when you talk about writing and reading, when you're talking about the refinement of speech, when you talk about grammar or the dialectic, or if you're talking about concepts of astronomy or music. The people from the Nile Valley were the very first people to develop a concept of time. Time is a concept that sprang from the minds of African people. They were the first people to divide the day into 24 hours. They were the first people to develop the calendar, 365 and a quarter days. They were the first people to build with stone. Uh, they were the first people to develop systems of education, uh, the first universities. The first, they invented writing. They invented paper. They uh, developed libraries. They were the first physicians, the first psychologists, the first dentists, the first brain surgeons. They were the first governors, the first rulers, uh, the first men and women to orient structures to celestial bodies in order to harness the spiritual energy that's generated uh, within a structure that is properly aligned to celestial spheres. So in other words, they were human beings who knew how to manifest the power of God on earth. Welcome, 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 everyone, to the Melanated Roots Radio Show. Um, we have a, a live show for you today. Uh, Melanated Radio uh, Show is brought to you by the Black Talk Radio Network. Uh, today is Monday, September 18th, uh, 2017, and uh, we do have a live show for you. And uh, your host for the show is uh, Brother Tommy and Brother Rio. And um, our topic today is dealing with matrimony uh, versus uh, a marriage. And um, we have some powerful information on that and, 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 and the invisible contracts that we go into when we uh, participate in these um, uh, unions, so to speak, that they put out there for us. Um, if you would like to ask uh, a question or share some information on this topic, please call uh, 866-510-9025. Please join the BTR community as well. Um, one way to uh, support the uh, the network and, and allow information to continue to be exchanged between conscious people with conscious minds. Um, we need to make sure that uh, we are participating and also that we are doing things that supports uh, the platform we, so we can continue uh, to communicate, get positive information, and spread the word. Uh, I just, uh, was, you, was you able to hear um, the introduction and, and me coming in, or was it just your mic that wasn't working? Yeah, it was just my mic that was uh, malfunctioning. I heard everything. Uh I'm doing good, brother. Uh, feeling good. How you feeling? Oh, yeah, I'm feeling good. You know, just went on a bike ride on that trail. Uh, was able to get in 10, you know, a good amount of mileage. So enjoyed the uh, beautiful scenery being in nature. So, you know, I'm I'm feeling good, you know. So, you know, definitely uh, looking forward to exchanging some information with the people and, uh, you know, you know, making sure we uh, discuss things, enlighten people. And people enlighten us as well, you know, basically have a change of information and ideas. And I think uh, uh, this topic uh, that we're about to bring some information on, you know, because, you know, 
there's a lot of brothers and sisters who, you know, want to do the right thing and, and have families and, and be married and things of that nature. But we got to understand, you know, what marriage is in this system in which we exist. I think that's a very good way of putting it uh, because, you know, it's just natural and, uh, you know, it's just laws of nature that uh, people get together and procreate. And of course, uh, you know, what goes along with that is our ability and our wants and our desires to support one another, uh, as well as build a community that's going to be, you know, effective in helping us move forward and, you know, have a productive life. And, you know, if you're having kids, of course, you want the community to be able to foster and grow and be supportive as well, because, you know, who your kids are going, you know, procreate with and, 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 and have a relationship with, you know, you want them to have the same things that you have and to build upon that and to go even further with it. Uh, so, you know, you want to afford them those same opportunities. But, um, you know, I, I feel that uh, through the propaganda system, you know, we've been misled and, uh, you know, we, we kind of lost our way as we have with many other things as to the best way uh, to come about those goals, uh, you know, but uh, that's what we'll be talking about today. Um, we won't start off necessarily talking about the relationship side of it, you know, how men and women interact and, you know, how they should, uh, I guess, best uh, support each other. Uh, but, you know, it may, it may, it may get to that. But uh, in the beginning, we're going to talk about the overall concepts. So, um, but uh, what, 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 what you got, brother? I mean, you always up on some some current articles and, and events, you know. What, what, what you what, what caught your eye today? Uh, well, you know, the same old same old thing. You know, watching and tracking the movements, and, and you know, basically um, studying the moves that they're making and, and situations as they arise, and you know, looking around at the landscape and seeing the unfolding events on you know on many different levels, you know. And so, you know, just really just being keenly aware of that. And also, uh, Brother Dave had a really positive show before our show came on and, you know, contemplating a lot of things that he was saying and then different brothers that was coming on there that was kicking, contemplating a lot of things they've been saying, been really on the, on them save, same wavelengths in a lot of ways in terms of really trying to be consciously aware and, and also make sure, you know, that, that I'm prepared and, and talking with people I'm close to, you know, about the things, preparation and, you know what I'm saying? Understanding, you know, how events are, are going to unfold and, and, and trying to put ourselves in the best situation to, uh, you know, look out for more than just ourselves, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. I do. And, you know, it's, um, you know, things are getting heated up. And, you know, a conversation that we had um, where we came to the realization that, you know, uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same, you know, because the conflict that they're having with North Korea, you know, I, I guess it can it can kind of be compared to uh, the conflict that they had with Russia. I think you know back in during the the fifties and the sixties, you know, they called it a Cold War, but uh, you know it was a lot of uh, posturing, you know, to keep the people in fear and, and terror. And the reason I say that was, uh, you, um, you know, there was an article I think me and you shared uh, about the construction company that is, um, you know, they're making uh, billions off of the sudden urge of people to create these underground bunkers. You know, I think they said it was about, what, 12 feet deep? Yeah. And you can get them, you know, in various sizes and, you know, uh, accommodate for, you know, whatever budget that you that you want to expend for that. But you have a lot of, uh, you know, stars, uh, actors, and entertainers, as well as, you know, people who are just well-to-do that are putting out a lot of money to get these, uh, these bunkers. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it just reminded me of, you know, the cold war scare. And, uh, it seems like it's a similar reaction. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you a question, brother Rio. Is there a, something in your background that keeps making a certain noise, like some type of electric computer type sound? Oh, you're, you're picking that up. Huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my, my apologies. Brother. Yeah. Consistently. Yeah. I was, I was thinking, okay, is that a toy? Uh, so, but, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, you're going to call me out on there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> nah, we had to shut it down, but no, no, I agree with is you. My, um, uh-huh. 
brothers, my uh, my volume at a good level. Um, someone uh, just texted me said they could they can't hear me. Uh, you you sound pretty good to me. Let me um um your yeah your tone. Uh, let me check one more thing. Um, uh, go ahead and say something to me. Check check microphone check. Oh yeah, you you coming you coming in pretty good on, in terms of the uh, on the buttons that that I need to read, but you know I I, I can't say you know I'm like, I ain't on the other side, so I can't I can't say. But so far you coming in pretty good. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, did you have any comments on the that that, that shelter thing though? No, no, no. I, I I'm just other than I'm in agreement with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I said I'm good now. So, all right, we off and running. Okay. Um. No. 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 I, I feel you. I, I. I. You know. I believe that's 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 good information. But go ahead. Move forward with, with, with what you said. All right. Well, there's one more thing. Uh, I wanted to bring up. Uh, you know, I was listening to to Brother Dave's show as well, and uh, <laughs> he read off a, uh, you know, uh, an article that said uh, that down in Florida. Uh, you know, they're trying to get legislation passed that if the power goes out, you legally can't use solar power. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. That is just crazy. Well, I mean, no crazier than not being able to collect rainwater legally in, 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 in states and different places where you cannot collect, it's against the law to collect rainwater. So I mean, uh, yeah. it, it's really um, them being very consistent in what they do. It, it, you know, they always have a reason for why they do it. You know that there's certain people of certain consciousness that will buy into the reasoning. Oh, we're doing this or that for your benefit. You know, or yeah, we're doing this for the cosmological findings. You know, <laughs> they'll, they'll run down something <laughs> with some real fancy terms on you and and slap that on there. But you know, they've been. You know, but but that's the situation we're in. You know, when we look at the status that we are in this country, you know, what I'm saying uh, you're you're not a true, you don't have true control and sovereignty. You know, so you you know they you know they give you rights and privileges and 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 they can take them away as they choose. And and if you just look and and see the the freedoms, the so-called freedoms that they give you, and then you know when they write executive orders and then restrict it and then restrict it again, then restrict it again. You know, there, you know, these rights and privileges, you know, that, that all goes back to the status in which we're in, in the first place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and also speaks to those invis invisible contracts that you, uh, you know, that you bring up. So, uh, you know, I'm in complete agreement. You know, it, it does sound crazy just from, you know, I don't know, I guess conscious or a general perspective, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just—I don't know. I, it never ceases to amaze me. It just—that's just wild, man. It's just wild. Yes, sir. Hey, but hold on, brother. Before we get into the topic uh, of the, of of the, yeah. of the show, this is what I want to do because we have a caller just raise his hand, just so you know as well. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Let's go to the caller first, and then I'll get to that. Uh, caller, area code seven one nine. Uh, say your name and go ahead and uh, uh, state what you have to say. Oh, okay. Area code seven one nine muted themselves. Brother okay, Reed. I guess they're just coming online. Yeah, yeah, uh, not a problem. Go ahead yeah. with your with your statements, brother. What was you about to say? No, what I was what I was gonna say is is you know really what it boils down to is is how well black folk or people who call themselves black are gonna be willing to work together, and who are gonna be willing to um, see each other uh, as you know, get away from the seeing themselves as separate and understand that um, success for all of us lies in us working together. And, 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 and the original family coming together, family, that's what fam coming together of us as in family and family units and groups was our strength in the first place. And that is the foundation. And, and, and until, you know, that comes back, you know, saying it's going to be very difficult, you know, saying to implement anything, when it comes to being able to uh, defend ourselves, protect ourselves and do the things we need to do to deal with this European, irregardless what it is that he has plans on doing. You feel what I'm saying? 
So mm-hmm. I got this this little video that's about three minutes and some change. The importance of black folk getting along and, and working together and communicating w- with each other. And I think this brother does a good job of, of, of giving a reasoning or a psychological thought or concept on why this is occurring. Because even in this day and time with all this stuff going on, I'm still walking past brothers and sisters in different places and spaces that don't want to acknowledge you. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't want to even, you know, have uh contact or, or, or at least the, the, how you're doing the greeting in terms of a common thinking concept or understanding. You, you know what I mean? I do. I do. It's just like, you know, um, I, I've been to New York like once, but I always hear stories. It, it was just for a brief time, but you know, you hear stories about how people, uh, you know, they put the head down and they just they go where they need to go. You know, they don't want to be hassled and they don't want to be, you know, troubled by everybody because everybody's got to hustle. You know, everybody they talking to you. You know, they trying to they want something. They're trying to get some money or they're trying to set you up some more. You know, you, you just ain't trying to hear it. You're just trying to get where you're going and, and do your business. Yeah. And I think that has infected us nationwide. So. Uh, I'm not calling out New York. I'm not saying it's just New York. New York. I think uh, it's within our culture now and it's nationwide just because we may have that stereotype or that stigma that, you know, oh, man, what what they want? Why are they coming? Why are they talking to me? You know, it ain't it can't be just high. They want something. They want something. Right. Right. And plus, I think that a that lot of people are really uh, due to heavy oppression and 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 heavy uh, violence and brutality coming from the European culture towards our and 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 also the propaganda uh, of 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 animalistic concepts, big lips, um, dark skin, just just the the horror that they've placed upon us has made a lot of us truly ashamed to be truly who we are. So let me run this real fast, brother. Real. <laughs> Why has the history of African peoples been erased? Well, we don't live in a fair world. Things aren't fair. You don't get equal opportunities. You get the opportunities that you create for yourself. And if someone gets in there first and they conquer you, they colonize you, they enslave you, they simply make your history disappear to make it look like they conquered, colonized and enslaved nobodies. When people have a history, that makes you a somebody. So if you remove the history, you become a nobody. And so, your history disappearing, nobody's lamenting the loss of that history. That's why conquerors, colonizers, and enslavers make the people whose history they've conquered, colonized, and enslaved disappear. There are psychological reasons why people would want to associate themselves with a history. There is a link between what someone thinks of themselves, what someone thinks of their people, and their history. Now, scholars talk about personal esteem. That means self-esteem. And then you have interpersonal or group esteem, which is what you think of your group or what you think of your race, racial esteem. Self-esteem and racial esteem are not the same thing. Someone can have very high self-esteem where they think highly of themselves and very low racial esteem where they think very badly of other black people. And in truth, Most black people have very high self-esteem and very low racial esteem. And that's one of the reasons why black people are prone to fight each other. Prone to disagree with each other. Prone to conflict with each other. Because someone thinks very highly of themselves and someone thinks very lowly of their group. And what happens is, if people can call each other the N and the B words, they're really saying, I don't give a monkeys about the black race. They've really just said that their racial esteem is very, very low. But every black person usually has very high personal esteem. So if someone thinks highly of themselves and very lowly of their group, that is a recipe 
for fighting. That is a recipe for conflict. And the way to raise people's racial esteem is to introduce them to their history. Um, and if the history happens to be a great history, a history that people objectively can be proud of, they will see their people in a very different way to how they see their people at present. And that's the difference between high self-esteem, low racial esteem, to having a balance where you have high self-esteem and high racial or ethnic esteem. The purpose of my work generally is to build that psychological balance between high personal esteem and high self-esteem. Yes, sir. So, um, um, in terms of what I was saying, Brother Rio, um, the the working together, the 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 lack of working together that we're doing. What do you think? What, what what's your thoughts on the video? I thought I think it was it was very powerful. It uh, had it brought forth some very good information <clears throat> as to um, you know us being able to to work together. Um, it's definitely needed, um, but. I'm just going to go ahead and go there, man. Uh, you know, in reference to the question that you asked me uh, before you played the clip and in light of what he just stated, um, I can come up with another reason as to, you know, why we can hold our heads down and, and not really engage each other on the street. Um, you know, some of it may have to do with what he was talking about with, with racial pride but uh, also, I think it comes with the understanding that, you know, how we have been towards each other for the last few centuries. Uh, in particular, you know, we can just put the Moors out there, uh, you know, because we know that the Moors, once they got kicked out of Spain, uh, a lot of them came over here and they started subjugating us and they pretty much, you know, sold us out to the, indig this, the, the indigenous population that was already here, uh, pretty much sold uh, us out to the Europeans that were starting to colonize over here. So um, when you have people who look like you and, you know, you're, you're welcoming and accepting into your culture and, you know, they're, I mean, they're stabbing you in the back. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm quite sure it was some indigenous populations and different tribes is doing the same thing, but, uh, you know, when you can't trust the people that look like you, you know, it, it it's just, it calls for some healing, brother. And I think we're still going through that today. You know, uh, a lot of our minds have been colonized. So we may think uh, from a European perspective and, you know, you just can't tell from the outside. So it, it's kind of hard to, you know, it's, along with the COINTELPRO operations, you know, it's kind of hard to tell who to trust and who not to trust. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I agree. I feel you. Uh, um, but but it's something that we must deal with. I mean, because uh, working together, uh, uh, you know, that's how we were able to accomplish all the great things we've done in the past. When we look at um, our history, our, our ancient history and the history of our people. And, you know, we know the masses of the people weren't, you know, uh, always, you know, afforded you know, higher aspect of certain knowledge and information. But for those who were initiated and those who, who, who did un understand, you know, the different levels of, you know, energy grids and electromagnetism and, and how to control different, you know, sound wave, you know, how to, you know, how to manipulate and understand things working together is, is, is what enabled us to really, really be able to create some wonderful and, and, and mag, uh, you know, majestic things. So when you mm -hmm. retard that in a people to where they're not no longer able to sit down at the table and work together to bring about the necessary change and the things you need uh, for the benefit of your progeny, when the people get to that point, you know, that's, that's a pretty low point. Yeah. Follow me. Uh, we do have a caller on the board, uh, 702. Do you have some comments or something you'd like to share? Yes, hello. Thank you for taking my call. My name is Red from Ohio. Um, I, I think that the clip that you, or this, whatever you, that you just played, if I'm not mistaken, that might have been Paul Afalmi Grant. Um, and it seemed like I kind of had like a, the person, an issue mean, with what mean, he was saying mean, not you, you to mean the person um, talking? You disregard mean, what he was saying at all. 
Hold on, um, hold on for a second. Hold on, hold on for I'm a second. Sorry. You mean the What's your issue? Sister? You mean the person was talking you you thought it was who? Could you say that again? Be, the person was a, a gentleman named Robin Walker. Who did you think it was? Oh, I thought it was Paul um if found me Grant. I I might be saying his name wrong, but he's another um I guess like a another black um I don't know, lecturer or scholar, what okay. have you, also in England. Mm -hmm. I guess they just sounded, like, really similar. Mm -hmm. But um, the only thing that I would um, – that I'm kind of wondering about is that it seems like with Asian people because um, – or, like, you know, East Asian, so Chinese, Japanese. My, my sister actually um, was learning, like, one of their languages and um, actually had a friend of that descent – and the friend was telling her how they're not really all that, um, you know, um, personable to each other, but it seems like they still have some type of unity. Mm -hmm. So that's what I kind of question. It's like, okay, yes, they might have, you know, high self-esteem, and then they might they might not display their high racial self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they would, you know, as they're walking down the street, maybe if I just met, I might just be thinking about it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like if they're just walking down the street, they don't necessarily say hi or smile at each other. But when it comes to doing business, they'll make sure they'll go to each other first. Or when it mm -hmm. comes to, you know, backing each other, it might be, you know, World War II. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like that um, communal feeling. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm kind of want to struggling with. And like I said, I'm not, you know, taking away anything from him. I'm not, I definitely would not say that I'm a scholar, but I'm just, you know, maybe just need some help. Um, just better understanding that. Um, and I'll, I'll mute my line. No, Thank no, you. no. Oh, no. Well, could you, could you tell me your name red. again? Uh, could you say your name one more time? Red from red. Ohio. Red from Ohio. Go ahead, Mario. Oh, well, I was just wondering, well, first of all, what part of Ohio? Because I went to high school in Cincinnati. I'm sorry, I, it, it kind of cut out. I'm sorry, you said something about Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, I was just wondering what uh, what part of Ohio you were calling calling from, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I was oh, I want to ask Central. you a question. Central, okay. I'm sorry, uh, Central Ohio. Okay, uh, well, I just wanted to ask you. You know, uh, well, how do you feel when you're out on the streets and uh, you know uh, you're being approached by you know someone of, of melanated color and just saying oh, or uh, you know just you know, saying lovely day or just trying to interact with you. Um, you know, what, what, what kind of feelings do you get depending on the situation or, uh, you know? What you, well, you feel what I would say is that it is kind of like a little, I, I know that y'all are having some tech issues. I've been listening basically since Tando Radio, but um, it does kind of sound a little gurgle. But um, as a, I am a, a black female, and uh, it, I feel like I kind of ha have, like, kind of lower self-esteem. But mm -hmm. I, when I started, like, turning off the TV, it, I kind of started building up that self-esteem. Mm -hmm. But out in, like, out in the real world, I feel like, you know, out in public, I still, you know, maintain that reserve because I feel like there are so many different melanoid people who are very confused and I don't mm -hmm. want to, you know, get too involved. So, I mean, basically sometimes if, if someone does have like a friendly face, especially if it's a melanoid person, especially a black person, mm -hmm. I will, you know, try to smile at them. Or if they say, how are you doing? I'll say, fine, how are you? Something like that, you know, mm -hmm. versus, you know, you know, somebody of the oppressive class, you know, if they say, how are you doing? I'm fine. And I don't, you know, engage them. But I just feel like there's not really that that many of us sometimes mm -hmm. I will try to en engage people mm -hmm. but you know they're just common with anybody there's like that fear of rejection mm -hmm. and especially I kind of feel like at least with me with how I've been trying to learn more mm -hmm. um, I feel like there is definitely that um, you know you you want to hope the best for for black people but it, it doesn't seem like it's you know going that well of course mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, 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 I understand that. I mean, sometimes you have to, you know, I'm not I'm not saying to an extent that you just, you know, you have to let your guard down and that, you know, what I'm saying you just have to be totally open with every black person you see just because they're a black person, because we do understand, you know, that there are people out there with, with energies, you know, what I'm saying who look exactly like you, but are not vibrating or resonating on the same frequency at all. Uh, so so I, I definitely 
think that that the basis of discrimination of who and in what energies you should interact with should always remain present. But I'm just saying sometimes just a general sense of um, in, 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 in very public spaces, you know, what I'm saying the hello, the nodding, the smiling, the black family over here who as a unit are getting things that they need and willing to, you know, say a, a, a hello to another person of the same ethnic group or of the same identities, you know, you know, we are having such, such tough existences out here and there's so many things that we have to experience under this oppression. So sometimes a, a casual hello or, or, or the right slide of conversation between energies brings about positive growth and change, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Just, just a general atmosphere of a lot more appreciation and Hey, how you doing? Good to see that you're doing well, that, that, that needs to be more, uh, persistent. Uh, what is your opinion of that? Oh, no, I, I definitely agree. I do try whenever possible. Like, if I do feel like they, they might be a little bit more open, like, not that long ago, like, I saw, you know, especially, like, I love seeing black families because mm-hmm. I feel like it's such, it's at least around me, mm-hmm. especially, like, when you're out and about, you know, you'll see lots of black females and just their children, and they Sometimes they have, like, this look of stress on their face. But, you know, to see, like, an actual, you know, black male, black female, you know, and their children, it, you know, it's kind of refreshing to feel like, okay, well, maybe we do have some type of hope. So I, I do try to, like, engage them a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so so it, there definitely is a try. But then, you know, also just personally, sometimes I just don't really feel like speaking to anyone. But um, <laughs> I just try to feel like at least <laughs> try to have somewhat more of a pleasant more of a uh, more of a pleasant look on my face, um, especially when it comes to our people to at least have some type of hope. That's that's basically what I try to hold on to. Okay. 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 Appreciate your comment. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Brother Rio, go ahead and bring it. You with me? Okay. Yeah, and and, and 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 another thing in terms of in terms of the conversation that we were having, um, we're still trying to figure out. Uh, Brother Rio's going back and forth, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on with him. Um, but you know, in in the, she, you know, Red makes a really good point in terms of you, you, you know, what I'm saying you, you, you know, you always, you know, you have your personal space. People have their personal space. And, and that needs to be respected. But I'm just talking brother? about, yeah, I hear it. just the basic feel of community. That's that. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, what's going on, Brother Rio? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties at the house, man. Uh, the internet got disconnected, so I had to call in. Uh, but I'm back. Uh, I'm on the phone. Uh, you know, you got to watch the boards um, for me. But, uh, yeah, I, I missed the whole conversation, so, uh, you know. And kind of catch me up as to what was going on. Yeah, we was we were just after you, you went you you were still on before um, the video ended, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, I, um, I I asked her a question, and then uh, you know shortly shortly after she started answering the question, um, I got disconnected. Yeah, yeah. She she just uh, she answered. She gave her experience, and 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 and, and she gave her. Uh, understanding of you know what I'm saying and you know in in acknowledgement of that there needs to be more of a a community uh, response and and that type of environment could be more beneficial because you know we we got to sit down and work together that that's going to be the bottom line there ain't going to be no way around it and and we're going to have to make these plans work so being able to uh, sit down and 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 have you know open dialogue amongst highly enlightened brothers and sisters it has to take place and. And then that way we can start laying the foundation to what we want to see the future be for our people, to what we want to see the future be for our children. We have to start laying those plans down. And those who are consciously thinking, those who are are looking to put forward, you know, take those steps forward in terms of they've done the research, they've done the reading, they've done the, the, the you know, the, the, the personal journey. They're, they're really to affect change in other people's lives. People are going to have to sit down. And 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 make it happen and and work together. That that's that's going to be the origin of that. Agreed, one hundred percent. Yeah, because we're going to have to come to. Uh, we're going to have to heal. We're going to have to heal, and we're going to have to be willing to uh, engage each other 
and you know we have to open up and we have to be willing to be hurt because that's the only way we're going to be able to build and we just have to be um i guess discerning about the people who we're going to build with so um I agree with you. I agree with you, brother. Yes, sir. So um, you want to go ahead and uh, move forward in uh, what you were talking about and how let's go ahead and get into the topic, uh, marriage versus matrimony. And and a lot of people who are married and have family, have children, really, you know, don't understand the concept of how, you know, their children have already been relegated over to another authority. Uh, someone has taken the place of the parent. Um, marriage is binding us to uh, invisible uh, contracts and, and and things that we must comply with that we're not aware of. And, and, and it's, it's not the holy matrimony in the eyes of God in that covenant with God that most people believe it to be. Is it, Brother Rio? Uh, well, uh, no, sir, uh, not at all. But, you know, I know that. I was taught marriage as, you know, something totally different from what I have studied and, and learned, um, you know, what it actually is. And just like everything else, uh, you know, it, it, it's multi-layered. So um, I think in order to get an understanding of at least marriage and, and, and how we, we deal with it in, in the United States, um, you know, I think we should go over the, a little bit of information to kind of give us a little backdrop. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that um, in America or in, in the United States, uh, we practice two forms of law. You know, you have the common law, and then uh, you have uh, what you would call your statutes, your codes, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, municipalities and uh, different divisions of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, and marriage is kind of thought differently depending on which aspect of uh, law that you uh, are, are talking about, and that's not even, you know, to say the, the religious aspect of it or how we are taught to uh, to view it, you know, from a religious standpoint. Um, I was raised uh, a Christian. I was raised Baptist. So uh, my upbringing had specific lessons as to, you know, what marriage was, what marriage wasn't, and, you know, a few lessons about, you know, how it should be handled and done uh, but as I studied law you know it, it, it kind of flipped this on its head so um, this is a, an article out of a, a journal a law journal community property versus common law and it's from the University of Maryland law journal of race religion gender and class volume 11 Issue 1, Article 2, The Origin and Civil Law Foundation of the Community Property System. Why California Adopted It and Why Community Property Principles Benefit uh, Women. Uh, what I'm going to do, I just highlighted some things out of this article. So it's not to go into too much detail. Uh, but it is not possible to fully understand the community system of marital property law without understanding its foundation. The origin of community property in the United States lies outside of English law, which is the common law, in the distinct realm of Spanish civil law. Courts noted that the whole system by which the rights of property between husband and wife are regulated and determined is borrowed from the civil and Spanish law. These civil sources help to show how a community property system differs substantially from a traditional common law system. Under the traditional common law property was under a title system. A wife who worked shoulder to shoulder with her husband received nothing at dissolution if they got divorced or uh, one person passed away or something of that nature. Um, if she did not share title to the asset she helped to improve. A 12th century code of canon law described marriage as a matrimonial covenant whose properties are unity and dissolubility. Unlike a marriage based on ordinary contract law, a covenant marriage, at least under traditional common law, was supposed to be more permanent. 
So there was no end to it upon death, of course. But um, community property, which is really what's practiced here in the States. Partnership first. Under a system of community property, husband and wife are treated as partners. This is different from the traditional common law notion of marriage, which saw a unity between husband and wife such that, in the famous words of William Blackstone, uh, spouses were one person in law. Community property recognizes a different relationship between spouses. It embraces a partnership that the relation of husband and wife is regarded by the civil law as a species of partnership. However, it is partnership of an economic rather than a moral nature. So the law regards the relationship between spouses in much the same way as it does a commercial partnership. This declares spouses subject to the same rights and duties of, uh, excuse me, of non-marital business partners. The property relation between husband and wife under the community property system is radically uh, different with the principles of common law. Although marriage and community property jurisdiction is often referred to as a partnership between husband and wife, the partnership which exists is different from a commercial partnership in two ways. First, the partnership arising from a community property system is not something the spouses agree to. Instead, it arises by operation of law when the couple marry. Recognition of the woman as an independent legal status is the second factor that distinguishes a civil law system from a traditional common law system of marital property. Uh, this is different uh, from the one person in law unity of husband and wife under the old common law. So community law pretty much rejects that um, the coming together and viewing it as one. So they choose to look at it as two separate entities uh, just coming together, uh, basically for the you know for business purposes. Yeah. A third and very significant distinction from the common law is that community property systems are not title based. In fact. The community property system pays little attention to title. Who has or holds title is not important. It is the source of the property which determines classification. This means that a spouse's share of the community at dissolution does not depend in any way on the amount he or she contributed to the community or that community property. So to pretty much sum up, uh, a separate legal identity uh, gives the ability of the married woman to own separate property in her own name under the community property system. And uh, this is primary. Under the old common law system, when a, woman, when a man and a woman marry, the husband received the ownership, management, and control of his wife's per personal property, which he could dispose of without her consent. This is because traditional common law systems of property centered around title. You got any comments on there, brother? Uh, hold on. Uh, uh, we got uh, Brother Bragg's uh, got his hands up. He's going to go ahead and uh, bring in a comment. Go ahead, Brother Bragg. I, I was just thinking as you were saying that, man. You sound like uh, two corporations merging. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> That's all I had to but, say, man. I, I just I just wanted to interject that small point. I'm, you know I'm sitting back <laughs> teasing because your boys are on point. You always are. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just sitting back maxing out with you boys. I, I'm enjoying you, no doubt. Okay. All right, bet. Yeah. Appreciate that, brother. Yes, sir. Appreciate and and, and we're going to keep that. moving on this topic. It's definitely getting in the status, brother Bragg, <laughs> so we definitely want to hear what you got to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I assume brother Bragg going to be kicking. If not this show, then the next show because, uh, you know, where is this going? You know, a lot of this can't be covered in just one show. Uh, but uh, did you have any thoughts on that, brother? Did that seem pretty clear to you? Clear as, uh, clear as uh, what do they say? Uh, yeah, clear, very clear. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, basically, you know, uh, not to beat a, a dead horse, but, you know, uh, the common law pretty much stated uh, that, you know, the woman, not necessarily that she didn't have any rights, but her rights were conjoined with uh, her husband, which if we get into the definitions, uh, how they define those words, I guess the, um, 
the people who created those terms, that their mindset becomes clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, pretty much the woman is, is, for lack of a better term, behind the man. Mm-hmm. Um, and her property becomes his property. He becomes uh, the husband, the manager of the property, and um, she is under his protection. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> which, I mean, is a double-edged sword because the law comes to him if something is out of order. Mm-hmm. It doesn't come to her, it comes to him. Mm-hmm. So uh, he assumes the head of the household. He assumes all that responsibility, and, uh, you know, that's the common law. But mm-hmm. when it came into community property, um, you know, they changed that. They looked at both of them as separate entities, uh, both having the right to uh, own uh, property. And other than contract, you know, that's pretty much the way it's going to be. So uh, you can always contract a, out of anything. But, um, you know, I, I, I my personal belief is that um, the community property aspect was looked at uh, because uh, it was advantageous to uh, the government and how they wanted to uh, manipulate the people within the country. Uh, but we'll, we'll kind of get to that. We'll kind of get to that. Okay, but okay, okay. Hold on, for, oh, oh, hold on for the brother. Oh, yeah, hold on for a brother, uh, second, Brother Rio. Brother Roz is about to make a comment. Go ahead, Brother Roz. Okay. Hey, peace and love to you all. How you doing today? Hey, nothing. What's up, bro? How you doing? doing? great, brother. How you Hey, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I wanted to say peace to Brother Bragg and um and the Sister Red. Um, it's good to hear her too. I wanted to uh, say two things. The first thing is um, one thing when my wife and I got married, the main reason we did, and I and I just told her I said it's a contract, and I said at least um because the system of white supremacy really left my my family in shambles as far as the way a lot of us relate to each other mm-hmm. so i told you you know i said if anything happened to me the little bit that i have i want to make sure you can get it and that's mm-hmm. the only way to guarantee it mm-hmm. otherwise we really didn't want to go through the process of marriage especially her she was very much against it she just felt it was old school and i agreed with her in a lot of ways but i told her i said you know for me the main reason to enter into this contract and i explained to her that it was a contract and that it was a legally binding business contract to protect the little bit of assets i have if something happens to me that none of my relatives can come out of left field and say hey you know y'all weren't married he was my son or here's my brother you know i'm coming to get whatever it is mm-hmm. um that was the main reason that we entered into it and vice versa for her um, in certain ways, and it was just interesting that you were talking about the whole common law system because it really goes back to a system of pimping. You know, it's no different than when a pimp gets a prostitute, he owns her money, she becomes his property, mm-hmm. and in the European system, that is the origin of that. If you read the book, The Iceman Inheritance by Michael Bradley, he discusses the origin of uh, quote-unquote sexism in the old way that Europeans did things, and he was talking about in the days of the caveman, when uh, they were living in, in the European steppes, they had no access to food. So men were more, more valuable to the society than women because they could always hunt and they did mm-hmm. not get pregnant. Right. Women, when pregnant, would basically use up twice the resources but be unable to contribute anything in, in, in terms of being able to hunt and kill to contribute to the food of the society. They were so hurting. that's the origin of patriarchy and the fact that the woman took the back seat mm-hmm. and um, – and men became the dominant factor. That's also the origin of, uh, excuse me, so-called anti-sexual behavior, because the males would go on these expeditions for long periods of time, and the more the more uh, successful males became the dominant males, and they would usually choose younger males for sexual partners, depending on how long they were away from their women. Mm-hmm. And the women were left at home in the caves with the with the whatever little farm animals they could muster, mm-hmm. and and the children. Mm-hmm. So that was the origin of lesbianism because mm-hmm. they had no, no mates when right. their mates were out hunting for long periods, so they would use each other. Mm-hmm. All of these things are the origin of European society. Same thing with raping animals. That mm-hmm. all started in the caves. Mm-hmm. So all of this stuff are remnants of their system that they've codified, made laws, and indoctrinated other people who had systems that were different to theirs that either honored the woman or gave her an equal place um, in the society. So I just find that that, that mm-hmm. law being written that way and essentially making the woman the property of the male and anything that she owns stepping into the marriage um, place, puts that under his jurisdiction just goes right back to that ancient European system of dominating women and um, that sort of uh, that how that plays out in today's society. And now their women have gotten all of our women on board with this nonsense via this uh, 
feminization, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, what you call it? Uh, oh, man, I'm tongue-tied. Uh, I, what's I, the term I'm looking for? Feminism. Feminism. Under yeah, this yeah. Uh, false guise of feminism, when uh, black women were the most autonomous women in history until we encountered white people and Arabs who came with the patriarchal system that suppressed women's rights altogether. So this is, you know, this is all remnants of that, and I just like the way that, the, that you're outlining those laws so that we can get a deeper understanding for how they've indoctrinated us to accept their system as normal and literally turn away from our own as detrimental. And we can see why there's gender confusion issues and all the stuff that we're dealing with now are just refined versions of what their ancient culture was all along. So thanks again, and I'll meet my line. Great show. Absolutely, absolutely, Brother Lat. And, and, and what I love about it, uh, Brother Real, is the way he peeped the game on that because when you were reading that and, and, and you were talking about the origin of it being in common law, you know what I'm saying, I was overstanding the very same thing because – when you were saying that how the woman was being spoken for for the man and and it probably went through him, yeah, that's the origin of European law. And and and, and brother Roz peeped it real smooth and and overstood the the you know the different sides of it because we know that we come from matriarchal societies and we had queen mothers that ruled in peace and prosperity for thousands of years. So. Uh, uh, women being in a position of high esteem or women being in positions of rulership and, you know, saying and being in, in positions of, of, of wisdom for our nation that, 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 that we, we were already there. So I, 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 I'm feeling Roz big time because, you know, I peeped the exact same thing because that's exactly what it was. So then that further hits home your point, you know, when we go back to their com, you know, even though, they're operating between two different ways here. You, they had a common law way, which is supposed to have had a little more protections as opposed to now we're dealing with the UCC code statutes and codes and they move the understanding of these relationships or these contracts that we go into. Now you about to basically unpack how that's being done from their messed up origin in their common law in the first place to where we're at now. So I feel you. Excuse me, can I say one last thing, brother? I'm sorry for interjecting. No, you're good. Most definitely. Go ahead, brother. Okay, thank you so much. I was just going to say, you just hit me with something when you were using the term common law. And a lot of times, you know, we are conditioned to accept terms that they use as being just platonic, ordinary, quote-unquote, English statements, but these things are spelled. And it's no different than when black people hear the term criminal justice system. We've invested in thinking that this system is treating us equitably. So we say, yes, I'm going to the criminal justice system to adjudicate a problem I have with another black person or with a white person or whoever the person may be. Mm -hmm. But what they're telling you is that criminals run the justice system. And we don't understand it that way until they do something to us. And then we have to go and really try and deal with an issue. They murder one of our relatives or they mis- abuse us in some form or fashion, and then we get the treatment that we see on the news every day. Then we start to realize, hey, it's, a, it's a cr- this criminal's running the justice system. And like Dr. Ben used to say, in Kemet, the scales of my aunt were always balanced, letting you know when you walked into a courtroom, you got justice. He said all across the United States, the scales are in balance. So they're telling you you're not getting justice, you're getting just this, meaning whatever they choose to throw at you. And with the common law, they're telling you that this abuse, systematic mistreatment of, of women is common. common right. So they made it a common law. This is exactly how they think. This is in their DNA, how they function. This is their cultural, religious, sociopolitical model, and it is common. So now we're making it common law. So I just wanted to throw that in there, too. Thanks again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, uh, uh, Brother Rio. Uh, very good opposite. Hold, 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 op- hold on, brother Rio. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, brother Bragg. Also, man, you got to remember we're dealing with the rights of kings. Ecclesiastical law, mm-hmm. law of equity, Roman law. Mm-hmm. All of this. This is where all these laws come from. The canons that you just spoke of. All of this goes hand in hand. So you're dealing with a feudal system where all men were born into slavery. All men had to pledge fealty to a king. If you were born in a villain, you may never leave that area. B I L L I E N, villain. From that vicinity. All this comes from, and we, now we can step into the Holy See. <laughs> Man, he gets really deep from that point on. Because we, we spread all into the law you're talking about into contract. Mm-hmm. Compact contract, same thing. Right. Right. As and well as coverage. is a contract. Yes. Saying. I, I don't want to start running too fast because I want people to follow you. Mm-hmm. But you, 
once again, you're killing it. I'm going to sit back. Please. Now, now let me let me kick this at you, Brother Rio. And also, like, in, in one thing that we got to, in, in, in like, I said, like I said, my dad used to say, how his father used to say, if you don't know nothing, you can't do nothing. And and he's so true about that because like like Brother Ross was saying, a lot of people believe that they go into marriage with the idea and the concept of building something with this person, being able to protect their assets and 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 the energy that them and their mate put forth in terms of uh you know and put into their children and they want that prosperity to continue on. See, but when we don't understand uh, contractual law um, and and the, the 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 their laws that govern you know, the existence. Now I ain't going to say the country that governs this corporation. Um, you know, we, we would have understood, okay, well then, okay, I need to get an understanding of, of trust law. If I, if I want to, you know, in, in this system, be able to pass something down, uh, my progeny or, or some type of energy that my children can build off. Then instead, let me, the, 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 the hell with going up here and, and so-called going in front of God and saying, I do, let me run down here and get some information on trust. You You, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, but slow down, brother. We're gonna get there. <laughs> We're gonna get there. Let's, let's, let's finish no. setting the stage. Yeah, but it's then, not. Uh, it's not really the know, point of finger. It's just, just to point out how once we do become knowledgeable about things, we can start putting into play the the, the things that we're looking to accomplish. That that's pretty much what I was trying to say. Yeah, once we have the knowledge, we can definitely, you know, and, and it's more beneficial to work on it as a as a, as a unit, you know, uh, so that we can stand together. And, you know, we definitely, there are some solutions out there, uh, but, you know, w- once we enjoy these solutions, you know, unity, uni- unified, then, you know, we, we have a lot better chance of, you know, uh, having them respected. Well, they ain't going to have no choice but to respect it, but, you know, uh, for every action, there's going to be, you know, a, a, a reaction. And, you know, united, we're going to be in a position to be able to, you know, shoulder that the repercussions of that um what i do want to go to is you know they 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 brought they did an excellent job of bringing out the mind oh, hold on hold on brother rio brother rio um, brother rio i hate ahead, to, i hate to interrupt you but we're right at the middle point of the show we have to take a quick uh station identification break and then right after that brother we're gonna pick up right where you at and we're gonna go ahead and bring it home okay so let's go to a quick break you're listening to the melanated roots radio show brought to you by black talk radio network and we will be back after this break for podcasts and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradio.com. The views and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Okay, everyone, welcome back to the Melanated Roots Radio Show brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. Uh, Brother Rio, you was about to bring some information uh, as we continue down our topic of marriage uh, versus matrimony. And um, are we really uh, getting married in the eyes of God or are we participating in a a, a form of commerce uh, that has been created uh, to bring us into the fold? Uh, Go ahead, Brother Rio. But what I was saying was the brothers did a very excellent job. Uh, go ahead and hit them with that number real quick, brother. So if uh, if the people, you know, first-time listeners have a comment or they want to jump into the conversation, uh, they have the ability to do so. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, brother. Uh, that number to call in uh, with your comment is 866-510-9025. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. All right. Um they did an excellent job of highlighting the mentality of the people that we're dealing with. And, uh, you know, a few shows back, you know, we, we broke it all the way back down to, uh, you know, the doctrine of discovery and all the papal bulls, you know, that, that came out from uh, the doctrine of discovery, uh, you know, saying that the colonizers uh, pretty much have the right to 
enslave and take over anyone uh, already found in the land, quote unquote, discovered by their explorer, by, excuse me, by their explorers. Mm -hmm. And you know, you have different doctrine that have uh, come down since then that represent that same mentality and that same idea, mm -hmm. whether, it, whether it be uh, manifest destiny or uh, the way that they, the Europeans carved up uh, Africa in you know, the Berlin Conference, mm -hmm. giving themselves different uh, jurisdiction over different parts of, of Africa, basically taking over the people and the resources, and of course, the people being part of the resources. Mm -hmm. um, same thing has happened here. It just uh, looks a little different. So after Manifest Destiny, when they took over all, you know, the land and they were, you know, uh, changing over to a new system, you know, you have these, these, these chartered companies that came in. Mm -hmm. And these companies eventually became corporations. Mm -hmm. uh, the corporations took over the Republican government that was here, and they started to implement uh, a brand new game. Mm hmm so um, what we're seeing is just a trickling down and a manifestation of uh, that same mentality from that same doctrine and aspect mm -hmm. that uh, has the European, or excuse me, the, the Tamihus uh, wanting to conquer the, the global system. Can I say one thing, brother? Yes, sir. When you were, when you were talking about this men mindset and mentality, you were also talking about how one thing that they use coming in is a charter, you know, a, a corporation, a, a corporate charter. And I would like to um, offer in a definitions of what a charter is, you know, when we're talking about um, uh, these instruments of control that they are using. So do you mind if I go ahead and introduce the, the, the Black's Law definition of the word charter? Sir, by all means. Okay. It says... Um, a charter is an instrument that establishes a body politics or other organization or that grants rights, liberties or powers to its citizens or members. And I like to I like this second one is a pretty strong one. An instrument, a charter is an instrument by which a municipality is incorporated, spec specifying its organizational structure and its highest laws. Uh, which is specifically a written document making the persons residing, there's that word persons, we're going to get into that, residing within a fixed boundary along with their successors, a corporation and a body of politics for and within that boundary and prescribing the powers, privileges, and duties of the corporation. A city charter trumps all conflicting ordinances. So they've given full power to that, that charter. And that charter is what they're using as their means of, uh, of of control and exploitation. And we know that we are under a master charter here called the what, brother? The Constitution. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. The Constitution, which is changing over to whatever the U.N. is going to uh, call it. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're in the midst of a changeover mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, uh, national governments to um, you know, a global government mm -hmm. it's supposed to be run by the UN. Uh, but yeah, like you said, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, but yeah, a charter, uh, the constitution. And matter of fact, do you, do you know the one thing that, that that's higher than the constitution? Contract. Contracts. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Contracts, whether it be a treaty or just a uh, contract between you and me, contracts are uh, higher than the constitution and are, they are to be upheld because that is the very basics of commerce, which is what the Constitution really governs. Right, right. All of these chartered uh, companies that, that came over here and expanded, uh, the Constitution was meant for them and to control their powers, mm -hmm. not to be uh, construed with the rights that the people have. They're the people's rights because they, they have the right not to be infringed upon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that understanding is very key. But, you know, that also gets into uh, exactly what we're talking about today. We're talking about uh, licenses. You know, we have matrimony, mm -hmm. which, you know, comes down from our upbringing. And for me, uh, I can speak from a Christian perspective. I'm no longer Christian, but, you know, that was the way that I was raised. So, um, you know, marriage to me was taught to be between uh, a man, a woman, 
and God. You know, so God is supposed to be the head, and then, you know, that flows down through the man and the woman. That was matrimony. What we call marriage today, uh, you know, was really known as, as, as matrimony until marriage came on the scene. Now, with these uh, corporations, with their charters, um, and the way that they want to do things, they have specific terms where they, where they define uh, particular words. Uh, so once marriage came into being, uh, you know, they have a, a particular kind of, of terms that they use. But what I want to do now is I want to go over the, um, I guess we can go over the term license. Mm -hmm. That sounds like that would be a good uh, place to kind of interject that. Let me go to my definitions real quick, brother. I have a definition here for you. Uh, where's it coming from, brother? Uh, Black's Law. Okay, go ahead and bring it. What's, what's the definition of? License. Okay, I have that as well. Okay, go um, ahead, go I'm ahead. Gonna do, I was going to do marriage first, but... Okay, go, uh, no, you go license. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, uh, marriage. <clears throat> um, this is coming from uh, Black's Law Dictionary. Marriage, as distinguished from the agreement to marry, and from the act of becoming married is the civil status of one man and one woman united in law for life for the discharge to each other and the community of the duties legally incumbent on those whose association is founded on the distinction of sex. I know it's a lot to unpack because they have a lot of terminology in there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but the, the high, things to highlight is, you know, it's a it's a distinguished from the agreement to marry. So uh, courtship and you deciding who your partner is got nothing to do with it. And from the act of becoming married, the act of becoming married. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're going through the ceremony, that has nothing to do with how they are viewing marriage. Mm -hmm. So that is what is called matrimony going through the ceremony, uh, pledging yourself to one another, which is a contract, and then having uh, whatever higher power that, you know, you, you, you want to subscribe to, you know, uh, being at the head of it. That is, that is matrimony. That's got nothing to do with the contract that you're going to make with the state once you claim to be married. It is the civil status of one man and one woman united in law for life for the discharge to each other and the community of the duties legally incumbent. So there is a certain responsibility that is um, presumed to be with the man and the woman in relation to the community. Well, what community is that? It's the community that they're defining. Uh, your community property, mm -hmm. and you have duties, uh, legal duties, and these legal duties you are incumbent to, which means, you know, you, you're, you're, there's an expectation that you are going to fulfill these duties. It's a contract. So you are entering a contract with the state, and they do not recognize your matrimony nor your, the vows that you took. Don't so, mean a thing. Say that again, brother. Don't mean a thing. Don't mean a thing. So I think that this distinction that is distinct that is the distinction that most uh people, especially uh devout Christians, need to understand. Um you know, and uh, I won't even touch, you know, the the pastor's role and all of that. Mm -hmm. We we can touch on that later. I have uh, you know, another reading. Uh, that kind of breaks down and highlights everything that we're talking about. Uh, but uh, now that we have the understanding of what marriage is, you know, we can go over the definition of what a license is. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the license. This is the definition that I have for license. And you can tell me how it it might be a little different uh, from yours. Um, what is license? In the law of contracts, a license is permission accorded by a competent authority 
conferring the right to do some act which, without such authorization, would be illegal <laughs> or would be a trespass or a tort. Now, they have some buzzwords, uh, so, uh, you know, it, it does require that, you know, people do some study of etymology and, as well as vocabulary, mm-hmm. uh, such as competent. Uh, you know, competent is, is a buzzword, and uh, I think we'll, we're going to go over that as we get more into status. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, conferring the right to do some act which, without such authorization, uh, would be illegal. Illegal as opposed to legal as opposed to lawful. So those are, you know, terms that we just have to understand and get an understanding of. Also, the written evidence of such permission. So the license is not only the getting the permission from the authority, it's also the written evidence of such permission. In real property law, an authority to do a particular act or series of acts upon uh, on uh, another's land without posing any estate therein. Brother Rio. So, <laughs> yes, sir. What status must the people of this Uh-oh. corporation be in for them to give you permission to do something? They're giving you permission. Oh, you, oh you, you, you love her? Oh, that's your girl? Oh, you love her? You want to be with her forever? Yeah, I'll get, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll grant y'all permission. You, you understand what I'm saying? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. That is not the case. Uh-huh. That is not the case. Uh-huh. Let me finish laying it out, and okay. that's going to become crystal clear. All right, lay it out. Okay? So, uh, basically, you know, not only are, do you have to have written permission uh, in property law, you need a license from an authority to be on somebody else's land or their estate to do your business or to do whatever it is, live your life or do whatever that is uh, that you want to do. Uh, that's basically what uh, that last definition was just saying. Um, but you also have to have written evidence of authority that has to be recorded. It is distinguished from an e- – oh, I'll have to go into that. Uh, in international law, it – License is defined as permission granted by a belligerent state to its own subjects Mm -hmm. or to subjects of the enemy to carry on trade. I thought that one was real interesting. So that's marriage, and that's license. So what is the definition of a marriage license? Well, a marriage license is simply the document that is executed by public authority that gives a couple the permission to marry. Think about those definitions, brother. That <laughs> just like what I thought. I mean, like I said, what must the status of 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 a person? What must what what is the governing structure? What is the structure that are that is governing these people? And what is the status people within that? governmental structure to where there are rights and privileges and permissions that can be given and taken away to those people. That's well, hold on. Let me, let let me hit you with something else, brother. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a little bit about the history of marriage licenses in America. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I got this off of the internet right before it went down. um, And I did not, get the source. So um, if you type in, if you Google history of marriage licenses in America, uh, it should come up, but I'm, I don't have the access to uh, to give the people the source uh, of where I got this from off of the web right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it starts off, I'm just going to read just a short snippet of it. Uh, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln was married without a marriage license. So how do we come to this place in America where marriage licenses are issued? Historically, all the states in America had laws outlawing the marriage of blacks and whites. In the mid-1800s, certain states began allowing interracial marriages or um, misogynation. 
as long as those marrying received a license from the state. In other words, they had to receive permission to do an act which without such permission would have been illegal. Mm. Black's Law Dictionary points to this historical fact when it defines marriage license as a license or permission granted by public authority to persons who intend to intermarry. Intermarry is defined in Black's Law Dictionary as uh, misogynation, uh, mixed or interracial marriages. What do you think about that? Say, Tom, you there? Yeah, say it again. You didn't hear that? No, for out? some reason you no, you went out on me. I, it was something was doing with my iPhone because I got the very end of what you said. Okay, so yeah, you read but, that again. Yeah, go ahead. One more time. My bad. Okay, uh, I don't know what you didn't hear, so I'm just I'm gonna start from historically. All the states in America had laws outlawing the marriage of blacks and whites mm -hmm. in the mid 1800s. Certain states began allowing interracial marriages or uh, miscegenation, as long as those marrying received a license from the state. In other words, they had to receive permission to do an act which without such permission would have been illegal. Right. Well, that, that speaks Black's to law, the definition. Go ahead. Black, go ahead. Yep. Black's Law Dictionary points to this historical fact when it defines marriage license as a license or permission granted by public authority to persons who intend to intermarry. Intermarry is defined in Black's Law Dictionary as uh, misogynation, mixed, or interracial marriages. So that's when the first concept of giving out a license first came into play, giving people permission to intermarry across racial lines. Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. In the mid in the mid eighteen hundreds. Well, you know, uh, well they you they know. knew that that's that, well, that's just another example of them that, tying into the vine. The what, only reason why they would do something like that is they needed uh, the benefits of of, of 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 melanated people's blood flowing back in their direction. That would be the only reason right. why they would do as something well of that as, nature, as well as to ensure that the wealth wasn't flowing outside of the communities that they wanted that you know those assets and that money to go to. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, that was a major genetic decision, I'm sure. Right. But the question does have to be asked, you know, why do the clergy, be them ministers, priests, pastors, mm -hmm. or rabbis, you know, et cetera, and the churches require you and your spouse to obtain a marriage license? We ain't got to deal with that right now. Hold on for a sec, uh, Brother Rio. We got a, a Brother Roz got a, a, a statement. Go ahead, Brother Roz. Hey, Peace. Thanks for allowing me to speak again. Um, yes, I was just thinking what you said was very interesting because um, I thought exactly along the same lines that essentially um, they wanted to allow an infusion of genetics from black people to diversify their gene pool since they're inbred. Mm -hmm. But the interesting part is for them to create the license around that says that the the white people, the more powerful white people, wanted to control the numbers of their people mm -hmm. that wanted to miscegenate. And to me, it yes. says that there must have been record numbers of white people that wanted to enter marriage contracts with black people for them to create that law in the first place. Yes, Just sir. immediately thought of Dr. Welsing. Yeah. And then the other thing was when you were talking about matrimony versus marriage, I thought about traditional marriage is in, in a lot of the um, – the African cultures where the matrimony dictates everything because you have to bring a dowry. Once you bring the dowry, then um, mm -hmm. the contract is entered between two families that their children would be married. Mm -hmm. And depending on the, the traditions of whatever ethnic group, the male would either move in and the woman's family compound or the woman would move in. Um, so it's just very interesting when you talked about that. And then the other thing is when you were talking about matrimony in the sense of uh, having a union in which God is the Godhead. I've always said that the, the main interest after practicing racism for white supremacy is to become godlike. And when we go to get, quote-unquote, married, 
we're standing before God in the form of that white person overseeing mm. that marriage. Even yeah. if you're going to a courthouse to, you know, do, do an elope, eloping or whatever, or if you're going, you know, to Vegas somewhere, the person presiding over that union in the form of the deity is the white person. <laughs> and they've effectively made themselves God in that sense. They, they talk, it, talk about it in third person, but their mm. domination of us, we have to go to them for everything in all ten areas of people activity. So the person who controls every area of your activity is effectively your deity. So I just wanted to toss that out there. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Thanks so much for this. This is highly enlightening, yes, and I'll meet my line. Yes, sir, brother Ross. Yo, that was powerful, man. The way you hit that, brother. Uh, that, that that was powerful. You know, what I'm saying, and then that's and that's 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 just the reality. Well, you, you're absolutely right, uh, brother Ross. <clears throat> and you have to understand, as well as you too, brother Tommy, that you know we're talking about a time period where uh, you know we 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 both know that they do need an infusion of, um, you know, melanated blood because, you know, we'll get into that later. That's another topic for another day. Mm -hmm. But during this time period, during this time period, when you have all these people intermixing, if you do not find a way to be able to track and control the way that people are intermarrying and, 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 you know, living their lives, you have a lot of mulattoes Mm -hmm. running around. Some of them you cannot distinguish as to whether their heritage is, quote, unquote, Negro, colored, African American, Mm -hmm. uh, Native American, or Caucasian. Mm -hmm. So uh, the attempts to eliminate that confusion, you know, that's where you got, you know, the one drop rule and, you know, all these other various, uh, you know, crazy laws that, that, and, and, aspects of society that that, that, that were popularized mm-hmm. is, you know, they're, they're trying to track and, and, and decide who's going to be a slave, who's going to be considered a slave, and who's going to be given or granted privileges mm-hmm. and benefits. Right. <coughs> so, you know, that, that is one, uh, another reason for the marriage license at that particular time period. Mm-hmm. Um, the way that it grows is just, you know, Brother Rod's hitting on the head is, you know. Uh, and I think what he said, the, the control, the control right. of the amount of people who wanted to do it. I, I, that's a very good point. When white folk get to licensing things and wanting to control things and, 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 and stem the ebb and flow of it, I think that's a good point, you know what I'm saying, because – you know, there's a there's you know, tall, dark, and handsome is is the mode of the day, and you have uh, uh people who are not of the melanated seed who have a high level of attraction, and and I told you I was I read a story uh, a, a, a scientist review where they were they took uh, a a study of white women and they 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 did uh, some uh, some type of study about their desire for black men, and they were showing that that women that were not of color, or, I mean, not melanated. We're, we're we're fantasizing literally about brothers. Just I mean, just straight up. So I ain't right. gonna get into all that. But <laughs> I, I I'm feeling him on that. That license was, yo yo, shut that down at this level. You feel me, yes, sir? Well, <clears throat> yes I do, brother. Yes I do. Yeah. And uh, I have a um an article that uh a brother read, I mean uh, wrote mm. by the name of Virgil Cooper. And this is going to lead us into uh, those invisible contracts, mm-hmm. as well as uh, some of the results of those uh, invisible contracts. Mm-hmm. Because I'm pretty sure, you know, we have a very um, knowledgeable listening audience. So, but I don't know if they know where, you know, some of this information comes from. So, this is going to lead directly into a conversation about status, but also, um, you know, uh, how we signed over our children, how our children really aren't our own mm. based on these invisible contracts that we've entered into. Yeah, um, so this is going to be a summary of what we already talked about, so people can bear with me, or if you didn't quite understand everything, uh, he does a good job of, of, of breaking down uh, the various aspects of this. Um, but it's called Marriage License, The Real Truth by Virgil, B-I-R-G-I-L, Cooper. D O O P E R. If you Google that, uh, you should get it. it, it it'll, it'll pop right up. Um, so basically, 
uh, enlightening conversation with a marriage license bureau. About 15 years ago, my former wife of 26 years filed for divorce. We had seven children, five daughters and two sons. Our youngest at the time, our second son, was five years old. At the time, I prepared a counterclaim to the petition for dissolution that her attorney filed in domestic relations court. I met one afternoon with the head of the uh, Maricopa County Superior Court Marriage License Bureau in downtown Phoenix. The Marriage License Bureau was headed by a young woman of about 25. I asked her to explain to me the general statutory implications of the marriage license. She was very cooperative and called the assistant, a tall black man who at the time was working on an operations manual for internal department use. She deferred for for most technical explanations to her assistant. He walked through the technicalities of the marriage license as it operates in Arizona. He mentioned that marriage licensing is pretty much the same in other states, but there are a few differences. One significant difference he mentioned was that Arizona is one of eight western states that are community property states, which we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. They abuse the man and the woman as separate entities with, with equal rights. Uh, the other states are common law states, including Utah, with the exception of Louisiana, which is a Napoleonic Code state. Uh, he then explained some of the technicalities of the marriage license. He said, first of all, The marriage license is a secular contract between the parties and the state. The state is the principal party in that secular contract. Um, Brother Tommy, are you familiar with the the term secular? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to quickly give a definition for for the word secular, uh, just in case there's someone out in the listening audience who's not aware. Okay, go ahead. Um, but secular, uh, as defined in, in, in black law, is uh, not spiritual, not ecclesiastical. It's relating to affairs of the present world. And the definition of a contract, since we are uh, at this juncture, is an agreement upon sufficient consideration to do or not to do a particular thing. A covenant or agreement between two or more persons with a lawful consideration or cause. A deliberate engagement between competent, there's a word competent again, competent parties Mm -hmm. upon a legal consideration to do or abstain from doing some act. A contract or agreement is either um, where a promise is made on one side and assented to on the other side or where two or more persons enter into engagement with each other by a promise on either side. Mm -hmm. The husband and wife are secondary or inferior parties. The secular contract is a three-way contract between the state as principal and the husband and wife as the other two legs of the contract. He said in a traditional sense, a marriage is a covenant between the husband and wife and God, but in the secular contract with the state, reference to God is a dotted line and not officially considered included in the secular contract at all, which means they don't even recognize it. He said if the husband and wife wish to include God as a party in their marriage, that is a dotted line they will have to add in their own minds. The state's marriage license is strictly is strictly secular, he said. He said further that what he meant by the relationship to God being a dotted line meant that the state regards any mention of God as, irre- as irrelevant, even meaningless. In his description of the marriage license contract, the related one, The related one other dotted line, he said, is the traditional religious context. Marriage was a covenant between the husband and wife and God, with husband and wife joined as one. This is not the case in the secular realm of the state's marriage license contract. 
the state is the principal or dominant party. The husband and wife are merely contractually joined as business partners, mm. not in any religious union. They may even be considered, he said, connected to each other by another dotted line. So the picture he was trying to paint was that of a triangle with the state at the top and a solid line extending from the apex to uh, from the state down the left side to the husband and a separate solid line uh, extending down the right side to the wife with a dotted line merely showing that they considered themselves to have entered into a religious union of some sort uh, that is irrelevant to the state. Oh, wow. And and, na- and now you got to go to this this man, the same man, when you want to dissolve this relationship, and he's going to determine how you dissolve it. And which is exactly what Brother Roz was speaking of. He's <laughs> putting himself in the position oh, of God. God. Yes, and is. you know, I doing research. You know, I, I found you know a proper an acronym being you know um, government ordinance department mm-hmm. being God because that's pretty much what they're trying to do. They're trying to run everybody's lives. But, uh, you know, he further mentioned that this religious overtone is recognized by the state by requiring that the marriage must be solemnized either by a state official or by a minister of religion that has been deputized by the state to perform the marriage ceremony and make a return of the signed and executed marriage license to the state. Mm, you hear that deputized, Brother Rio. Go and put that in the into context. Well, I mean, we can go into the definition of a uh, you know an agent or agency, uh, but you know we're gonna come back around to that when we start talking about status. Okay. So uh, I think you know we can keep moving along because it, it, it's gonna show up again. Okay. Again, he emphasized that marriage is a strictly secular relationship so far as the state is concerned and because it is looked upon as a privileged business enterprise. Various tax advantages and other political privileges 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 <laughs> have become attached adhesion to the marriage license contract that have nothing at all to do with marriage as a religious covenant or bond between God and the man and the woman. Got any thoughts on that so far, brother? <laughs> it, 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 uh, you, you just you just basically went into a contract, and the reach of that contract is unknown to you. So, in other words, you are at a disadvantage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Disadvantage is a good way of saying it. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. So, in the civil in the civil law. The marriage is considered to be a for-profit venture or profit-making venture, even though it may never actually produce a profit in operation. And as the wife goes out to the local market to purchase foodstuffs and other supplies for the marriage household, she is replenishing the stocks of the business. So to restate, in the civil law, the marriage is considered to be a business venture that is a for-profit business venture. Moreover, as children come into the marriage household, the business venture is considered to have borne fruit. Mm. Wow. Go ahead, brother. Um, now back to the explanation by the uh, Markopia County Superior Court. Uh, marriage Bureau's administrative assistant, he went on to explain that every contract must have consideration. The state offers consideration in the form of the actual license itself, the piece of paper, um, the certificate of marriage. The other part of consideration by the state, <clears throat> get ready for this, is the privilege to be regulated by statute. Mm. Be, to be, he added that this, wow. Go ahead, brother. No, just the privilege. There, there's no privilege in being regulated by a statute. Matter of fact, that statute going to break you down. Well, I guess that's just a matter of perspective, brother, because, you know, they all for it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He added that this privilege, he added that this privilege to be regulated by statute includes all related statutes and all court cases 
as they are ruled on by the court mm -hmm. and all statutes and regulations into the future in the years following the commencement of the marriage. He said in the way the marriage license contract is a dynamic or flexible, ever-changing contract as time goes along, even though the husband and wife don't realize it. Mm. Another way to look at the marriage license contract with the state is as a contract of adhesion, a contract between two uh, desperate, unequal parties. Again, a flawed contract, but it's a contract nonetheless. And a contract, as you said before, is the highest, highest law, law of, of the, the land, land, even above the Constitution. Yes. And, and, and it is binding across the board in that contract, just like they were saying about that marriage license. And, and, and you can see how it reflects the same in contracts. It doesn't care about about the emotional human, the, the, any emo, any attachments or anything in it, the, 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 uh, any emotional or compassion, any aspect of that. It, it cares none about those things, only about the terms of the contract. That's it. And it. And it stands as law as long as that contract is in place. So if you don't rebut the mm -hmm. contract mm -hmm. or the presumption that a contract exists or correct the fact that you have entered into a contract unknowingly mm -hmm. or that it's unequal, unless you correct that, you are always subject to the terms of that contract. Yes. So a lot of times, this is just a sidebar, but a lot of times when we go into courts, we're already putting ourselves in their jurisdiction, mm -hmm. number one. But number two, we're trying to argue constitutional laws and our rights and things that we should be able to do when that has nothing at all to do with it because, you know, as well as I do, there really are no more judges. They're just magistrates. Without a doubt. That in place to look over Equity, which has, as Brother Ross says, has nothing to do with justice. Mm -hmm. Equity, and about them getting their cut because they got their hands into everything. So all he's trying to determine are the terms of the contract, who's in honor, who's not in honor. Right. If you're not in honor, well, you are going to have, well, we're getting into status. Let me let me digress right. and get back into this. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Such a contract with the state is said to be a specific performance contract as to the privileges, duties, and responsibilities that, it, that attach. Now, that is key and is very important because just like we're talking about those terms, there's a presumption that a specific performance is going to be taking place, and that is what you are contracting to. And in that contract, you're going to have certain privileges. You're also going to have certain duties or expectations and responsibilities, uh, excuse me, responsibilities attached to that contract, mm -hmm. whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I believe that's what you uh, often term invisible contract, mm -hmm. getting into uh, situations that you, you know, have a clue <laughs> that you were getting yourself into. Okay, so I'm about to bring this home, <clears throat> and we're about to see how it affects um, our, uh, our prodigies. Okay, come on with it. He also said that it is very important to understand um, that children born to the marriage are considered by law as the contract bearing fruit, meaning the children primarily belong to the state, even though the, not, the law never comes out and says so in so many words. So because of the adhesion contract and the union between a man and a woman, not under God, but under the state, we have voluntarily contracted our community property, the things that a man and a woman who join together in marriage, not matrimony, and work towards building, 
from our perspective to better our prodigy and to contribute to the community. But in the aspects of marriage, mm -hmm. it's for the benefit of the community of the state. Mm -hmm. And they're going to come in and they're going to regulate that marriage. So if you are conducting yourself in a way that the state feels is unfit, this is where they call for the authority to come in and take their children, not your children. You were talking about, uh, you know, trust, and, and, and trust depends on split titles. Mm -hmm. You have a legal and you have an equitable, equitable title. title. That's right. You know, so what they've done is they come in and they split the title, and they're saying that these kids are us. We're just giving you permission to take care of them for us. And as long as you are doing a good job, you're good. But if you do something we don't like, we're taking them out. And Here. you can't stop us. And there's nothing you can do to stop it because you you voluntarily contracted into this. Ignorance. Ignorance or ignorance of the law is no excuse. Uh, Brother Rio, so, opting opting into through the marriage contract, the, the, this magistrate telling you how much money you and your wife need to exchange between each other, the magistrate te telling you where the children live, who has custody of them. You know, these are the type of uh, power and authority that we are giving away when we are signing into these invisible contracts and not understanding the full uh, uh, breadth of the contracts. Therefore, hey, you regulated and governed by them. You are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Uh, so in regard, children born uh, to the contract are regarded as the contract bearing fruit. So it's not really the man and the woman having, having children. It's the entity bearing fruit. Bringing on more cor which, corporate identities. Right, of which the state is entitled to the profit. So he said it is vitally important for parents to understand two doctrines that became established in the United States during the 1930s. The first is the doctrine of Parenis Patria. That's P-A-R-E-N-S. And then Patria is P-A-T-R-I-A-E. That's the first doctrine. The second doctrine is in loco parentis. In loco, I N, loco, L O C O, parentis, P A R E N T I S. That's going to bring it. That first, that first doctrine, parentis patriae, means literally the parent of the country or to the or to state. It more bluntly, uh, the state is the undisclosed, undisclosed true parent. Along this line, uh, there's a 1930s uh, Arizona Supreme case uh, that states parents have no property right in their children and have custody of their children during good behavior at the sufferance of the state. This means that parents may raise their children and maintain custody of their children as long as they don't offend the state. But if they in some manner displease the state, the state can step in at any time and exercise its superior status and take custody and control of its children, of its children. The parents are only conditional caretakers. Thus comes the doctrine of in loco parentis. Now, this is uh, one of the doctrines that, that gives rise to all the issues that we have with the school systems. The marriage, I'm going to go back into the marriage license real quick, though. Okay. Um, the marriage license is an ongoing contractual relationship with the state. It's dynamic. It, it can change and move uh, and, and uh, adapt with the times. So, technically, the marriage license is a business license allowing the husband and wife in the name of the marriage to enter into contracts with third parties and contract mortgages and debt. They can get car loans 
home mortgages and installment debts in the name of the marriage because it is not only a secular enterprise, but it is looked upon by the state as a privileged business enterprise as well as a for-profit business enterprise. Mm. The marriage contract acquires property throughout its existence and over time. It is hoped that it increases in value. The marriage contract bears fruit by adding children. If sometime later the marriage fails and the divorce results, the contract continues in existence. The divorce is merely a contractual dissolution or amendment of the terms and conditions of the contract. Jurisdiction of the state over the marriage, over the husband and wife, now separated, continues and continues over all aspects of the marriage, over marital property and over children brought into the marriage. This is why family law and the domestic relations court calls divorce a dissolution of the marriage because the contract continues in operation but in amended or modified form. He also pointed out that the marriage license contract is one of the strongest, most binding contractual relationships the state has on the people. Mm. So one there, of the strongest ones, brother. Mm. So there is no discharge. Just like when they say there's a discharge in the debt, the record is still there. It is, it is still in play. There's no such a thing. They just amend uh, mm. the terms of how they want the contracts to go. So basically, they're still keeping both entities as the fruit of the contract. So basically, they don't want to lose that fruit because, like you said, that gives them more uh, uh, corporate uh, tax numbers. Yeah, and just, so and, and just charge, like and just like a, debt too. And just like a situation where uh, a wife and a husband go in and buy a vehicle together, they would like both of their names on the loan so that if anything occurs, they have more than one person. They have both individuals to go after. So they're always setting it up to where you know what I'm saying? They have two two people on, you know, everybody possible on the hook. Right, right. But check this out, Brother Tommy. Yeah. Um, hold, hold on for a second. His bro. boss. Okay, go ahead. His boss, the young woman, Marriage Bureau uh, Department head, stated, you have to understand that people who come in here to get a marriage license are in heat. Animal term. Animals are in heat. The last thing they want to know is technical, legal, and statutory implications of the marriage license. Mm. <laughs> they're praying on they're praying on the emotions and the ignorance of, of, of people, but they are directly they are directly referring to these people as animals. They're referring to us, everybody, and this is across the board. And, you know, this got nothing to do with um, you know. Uh, being melanated or non-melanated or anything in between. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just power and control. Mm -hmm. They are getting control of everyone. They're viewing people as animals. Animals are property. That's right. And you can only give them privileges. They have no rights. And and the license is a permission, is a privilege. It is definitely a privilege. Yeah. So, and, and, and you can see the evidence of this mentality uh, and this thinking in the way that, uh, you know, different words are defined, uh, which, I mean, you know, if you if you go into wife, uh, the definition of wife, the etymology of the word wife um, comes from Middle English, um, comes from with, uh, which means woman, female, or lady, also, but not especially wife. Uh, from Proto Germanic, um, uncertain origin, apparently felt as inadequate in its basic sense, leading to the more distinctive formation with man, source of woman. In Dutch, with now means in slang, girl or babe. Babe is again an animal. Having softened somewhat from earlier sense of bitch mm. which is, <laughs> wow which again is an animal <laughs> yeah, yeah. wow the when modern german cognate also tends to be slightly um be sliding or derogatory in early medieval times uh was woman female or again person 
being retained for a uh, woman of gentle birth or a lady, if you you know if you if you if you believe in that corner thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but from but from from the, from the 1200s, uh, wife took on a common, almost vulgar tone that restricted its usage in certain circles and largely has been uh, displaced by uh, you know the more popular in the German word uh, frar frar you know when they say frar loin or something mm-hmm. of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, to the more usual Indo-European uh, word, it is represented in English by queen, which we all know queen is the king, you know, the definition of queen is king's whore. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, 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 so the word wife definitely woman has negative also, connotation. Words for woman also double for wife in some languages, which is uh, uh, weep, W-E-I-P, to twist, turn, wrap, uh, perhaps with a sense of veiled person, veiled person, somebody that's covered up or again behind somebody. Brother Rio, give me a second, real fast. Uh, we got a, a caller on the board, uh, Eric Code uh, uh, Red from Ohio. Uh, go ahead and uh, say what you got to say. Um, yes, just really quick. Thank you um, for letting me speak again. Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed that you're talking a lot about. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very good. Yeah, you can be heard. Oh, okay. Um, so you're talking a lot about basically the marriage, but it seems like, you know, there's also like the stake and take away like single mother's children. And I'm kind of wondering like how does that factor in because they don't necessarily like a single mother. I am i don't have any children, but I'm around a lot of black females who are single mothers. They can also take away their kids. So I was, you know, just kind of thinking about that as well. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. I'll meet myself. Okay. That's a very good, that's a very good question. That's mm-hmm. a very good question. Because uh, remember, <clears throat> marriage licenses came into uh, existence in the 1800s. So, uh, you know, and then in the 1930s, they started uh, applying the doctrine of, uh, you know, the, the, the state is the, the, the father, you know, the father of the country. And, you know, they started being the head of uh, the marriage household. So, uh you could say it's from the 1930s, the people who got married then, they had children. Those children were the fruit of those contracts. So those children, in the eyes of the state, were property. Straight because up. Because like the lady, like the lady said, uh, the people who come in here are in heat. Animals are in heat. So they get a marriage license, and these animals go off, and they, they're in heat, so they mate. And they have fruit, and it's profit for the state, which owns the animals. So even if that 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 fruit grows up and never marries, not even getting into the birth certificate and other invisible contracts like the driver's license, voter registration, uh, the bank, bank account, system, and 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 things of that nature, social security, things of that nature. Just the fact that the parents entered into a contract and bore fruit, which is the child, they are already considered property. And whether that person marries or not, if that profit goes on to have a, a, a child, which is more profit, that profit is going to be held under the same terms of the contract. Wow. And in local parentis will, will, will rule the day. And local parentis, yep. Uh, when you when you sign your kids up for school, you are giving them authority in local parentis. Yes, uh, that means that you know you're giving uh, the, the school guardianship. That you, basically, you're allowing them to become uh, another party in the parenting of the child. And, and a parent in right. place of the parent is 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 more specific. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And they have legal responsibilities mm-hmm. that they're accountable for. Mm-hmm by the state. So there are certain things they can dictate to you, the natural parent who gave birth to the child, such as, um, you know, getting immunization shots. Your child has to have immunization. Well, no, we don't believe in that. Well, yeah, you do. (laughs) You're into this, you're into this contract. You enrolled your child in our school. 
you effectively, through an invisible contract, agreed to have us parent this child for at least a particular part of the day. And in order for us to do that, we don't need this kid to get immune, uh, immunized in the discussion. And if you don't do it, we're going to report you to the state right. so that the state can step in and say that, well, you're not living up to your obligation. Right. And either they're going to force compliance mm -hmm. or they're going to take your kids away. How do you want to handle it? Right. Right. And, and we all should see, uh, Brother Rio, how uh, based upon the way they have this system set up and, like you said, the birth certificate, um, the driver's license, all the uh, many different um, invisible contracts that we are been at, you know, adhesion takes place and in, in, in we are not knowing. You can see how they being the author of these things, give them the authority and you can see how they push their authority because they have the ability to. Well, they have the ability to. Um, they can do it forcefully or, you know, their tactics are to get us to consent to it. Yeah. So right now, because we don't have the knowledge to not enter these contracts, which they may still do it forcefully, but that's, that's a whole nother story. That's a mm -hmm. different animal, right. you know? Uh, but right now we don't have, we have, we are crying out. We're crying foul and we're complaining and we're telling these people, you don't have the right to do this. And they're looking at us like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> you people are, hey, man, we're doing a great job because these people, they don't have a clue exactly. that they are volunteering yeah. for everything that they are getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we have to educate ourselves. So, you know, on our part, so, you know, that's the part that we have to raise up. We have to raise our level of consciousness. We have to raise our vibration so that we can see these tricks, these, these invisible contracts, and we can avoid them and then come together, plot, plan, and strategize of how we want to do things right. and become self-determining. I agree. And we're going we gonna, to we gonna kick the mentality of, of these, you know, these, these <laughs> psychotic. <laughs> psychotic, <laughs> brother. Right in the keister, and yeah. get back to you know our ancient roots and philosophies and and ways of thinking, and get back on track, brother. Right, and but the, but hey, we're 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 going through that process. It starts with peeping, peeping the game first, and being able to uh, see them coming from many different directions because. You know, they they slipping and sliding on you with, with so many different angles because they have studied us so well, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and so they know that, you know, it has to be a holding down of us. But, hey, brother, we, we, we're caught up in some invisible contracts. Uh, we're going to move into uh, some different areas about those inv invisible contracts and the different ways they affect us in, in the next show. I would really, really like to really uh, uh, point out to our brothers and sisters how, uh, when you go into these banks, these are the king's banks, and 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 creating a, a interest bearing checking account and 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 the invisible track and the adhesion that that applies you to, people will people will just be blown away on uh, um, that they are they are de directly doing business with the, with the king when they are going to these to these financial institutions referred to as banks. Brother Tommy, yes sir. I'm sorry to interrupt. You. Can, can you can you can you ask uh, Brother Scotty how much time we have? I really want the people to hear that clip. Now that we laid out this information, uh, I, I, you know, I, I think it will give us some good perspective, you okay. know, as to, um, you know, the situations in which we're talking about and the situations that we want to correct. Okay. All right. Well, Scotty, Scotty said we good. Um, what this is is uh, basically the sister who uh, was uh, her uh, was killed in a freezer and and or something happened. Do you do you know exactly what happened with the sister, brother? Real? They they don't understand how she got I, inside the freezer. Um, I do, but I'd rather not deal with that in this particular uh, segment. Uh, it just, you know, uh, I mean, it, it, this could be, because this could be anybody, uh, and it has been a lot of people, and, you know, it, it's a story that we hear a lot. Uh, so, you know, I, I'd rather just have, uh, you know, the, the, the message that we're trying to, uh, you know, combat be the emphasis today. We'll set, we'll set the stage uh, on no that message. We'll no. set the stage on that message then. Okay. Um, well, um, you know, this is from um, a parent who is going through a crisis with her child. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I believe it, it speaks for itself. And, uh, I mean, we can comment afterwards. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's a heartfelt emotion. And, you know, 
She had no access to her speak, child. Speak for ba- basically, the authorities had total control over her child's physicality. Her child, she could not even see her own baby. So let's let's get into it now. You know, remind you, we didn't know this was a crime scene at 4 o'clock in the morning. Right. Once the, after they declared she was dead, when I started asking, can I see my baby body, and they first denied me. And I asked for the sergeant name, the police name, and um, the detective name, and the sergeant name. Yeah. When I asked the sergeant for his badge number, then he said, I got to talk to the more. I said, can I see how my baby laying down there, you know, how, how, she, fit, how she died? Yeah. And they wouldn't let me see my baby but from one... One just at one thirty a.m. in the morning of today. Yeah. And to about what it was about what time about for like four hours after that. Yeah. Then that's when they pronounced her dead. Okay. And how are they? Wait, no, nah, they they told me she was. I'm sorry. They told us she was dead at one morning. something, but they didn't let me see her body until four hours later. Once. They had, they did let me see. They wouldn't. They would. They refused my mother, my sisters, her uncles. They refused my family to see her. They said, you, only you and your daughter can see it, and you can't take pictures because this is a crime scene. And this is still in the deep freeze? This, this in is the in deep the freezer, deep but they had, at this time, they had let the morgue take her, move her, on defrost the freezer. Right. Her hair had soap and water up on it. Yeah. They, she, defro- she was defrosting the freezer. They defrost the whole freezer. Yeah. I guess that's what it gave you, four hours, right? Yeah. But I asked her, can I see my daughter? Why I can't see how she died? Why I can't see? Because I know in the deep freezer, I know in, I, at my job. You have to and pull up and there. Remind you, you can't even hold your balance. Yeah, walking. right. All so right. now so. you got to struggle. And at my job, with our coolers, yeah. you got to have some strength to yeah. yank these doors open. Yeah. Now, remind you, they said she couldn't barely hold herself up, yet alone pull open the door. Right. And they said, the police department said, Freak accidents like that do happen. So they're saying they're and trying they to say they that she. And they said they didn't see her. They, they, she, and it's a camera sitting right in front of the cooler. They didn't see how she got in there. So they, they didn't even to see tell her. Yeah, they're said, trying to I tell said, you. I said this the this the detectives that was out there. Okay. And then this this the this the him he was the one that was out there when they first discovered. They started coming in there. We sitting in the lot. We wasn't even allowed to when they discovered nobody. We wasn't even allowed to stand in the hotel lobby. They put us out. We had to stand outside and look, and we had to look on the 11th floor. We just looking, just hoping and praying that we could get some kind of help because the people looking at us, like, you know, just, they looking at us, yeah. and, you know, looking like, <laughs> what they doing what out here, you, doing you know? Right. And um, we was forbidden to come back in the hotel room. So we, we studied, tried begging for help, begging for help. The police department couldn't even help us. After they found my baby dead, they couldn't even help us. The, Bastards! They couldn't even help us. Brother Rio. Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. Uh, well, you know, I, I think it just, it's highlighting, you know, a situation that we often find ourselves in, uh, especially uh, during times of crisis, uh, dealing with loved ones, you know, a time when you, you, you're definitely prone to be emotional. Um, so, I mean, if you're, especially if you're unaware of these, these invisible contracts, you know, this could be traumatizing. I mean, it is traumatizing, either way you look at it. But, I mean, the fact that other people have control over your own loved ones and all you want to do is, is you know, just you want to do what you want to do and, you know, you have a God-given right to do that. But just because of, you know, a contract that you didn't understand fully, you're subject to, you know, the these kind of atrocities. So, um, you know, we bring this information, you know, hoping that, you know, that, that you share the information and that, you know, we can all come together and discuss uh, openly these issues and things that are going on. And, you know, we, we, we start to view the other uh, so-called people that we, that others, that some people look to unify as, as well as lead or, or, you know, sound the drums or try to make change uh, through proper channels, you know, um, put this on their agenda, you know, because, you know, this is these are the hearts and souls of the issues that we are facing. Um, they prevent us from being 
self-determining and, you know, just unifying as a whole. And it allows us to hold on to illusions that just aren't within the realm of this reality. So um, anything you want to add to that, brother? Yes, sir, brother. I'm going to add to that. And also, we're about to go ahead and, and get on up out of here. And we've had a really good show. What What I would like to say is I feel like that video really speaks to the level of domination and control that the Europeans have over our people at this time. And and, and, and it really speaks to uh, what Sheikh Anta Diab said, that if our black ancient ancestors woke up and looked at the geopolitical situation, they, 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 they would lose their mind because the the where we were at in the level of control we have over 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 our own lives and the lives of others compared to where we are at now it would really literally just blow their mind because they would never thought that we'd be in this predicament or this situation so we have to understand that we are being held in a situation still like property and 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 and, and they are still controlling and dominating uh, aspects of our lives and we have to understand that and brother Rio on the way out the door I would like to read this little quote uh, because I know a lot of people are uh, 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 protesting in St. Louis and it's been going on and, and I know it's designed and everything, but uh, people have to understand the status that they're in and why this situa- the system does exactly what it does. And I'm about to read this little snip- snippet to you. It's uh, in the book called In the Matter of Color, Race in the American Legal Process mm. During the Colonial Period by mm. Leon Higginbotham. And in 1705... Mm. Uh, they were creating uh, statutes, um, and uh, it was a statute. This is a particular statute in the state of Virginia in the year 1705. So this is basically how they feel about black people and the way the reason why they treat black people the way that they do. It says, and if any slave resist his master or owner or other person by his or her order, correcting such slave and shall happen to be killed in such correction, it shall not be accounted felony, but the master, owner, and every such other person so giving correction shall be free and acquit of all punishment and accusation for the same as if such accident had never happened. Okay, Brother Rio, um, a really good show. Uh, knowledge and information you brought was, was heavy and strong. Um, we will definitely be on uh, next week at 8 o'clock. Um, uh, Mondays from 8 to 10 definitely going to bring some powerful information anything before we get up out of here brother Rio no brother uh, I think you I think you said it all we're going to tackle you know this, this topic you know continuation with the invisible contract as well as dealing with status and uh, we're going to continue to deal with the vocabulary as well uh, because we have to change our mindset and we have to use different words uh, not only know what they mean so that we use them in the right venue, but when we are communicating uh, with each other that we use words that empower instead of hindering and creating uh, further illusions. Uh, so with that, you know, everybody have a good week. Uh, protect each other and yourself, and we'll be back here uh, next Monday, 8 o'clock from 8 to 10. Peace. Yes, sir, Brother Rio, and we out. You are tuned in to the Black Talk Radio Network. For podcasts and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. The views and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Whether you're dealing with engineering or technology, when you talk about writing and reading, when you're talking about the refinement of speech, when you talk about grammar or the dialectic, or if you're talking about concepts of astronomy or music. The people from the Nile Valley were the very first people to develop a concept of time. Time is a concept that sprang from the minds of African people. They were the first people to divide the day into 24 hours. They were the first people to develop the calendar, 365 and a quarter days. They were the first people to build with stone. 
Uh, they were the first people to develop systems of education, uh, the first universities. The first, they invented writing. They invented paper. They uh, developed libraries. They were the first physicians, the first psychologists, the first dentists, the first brain surgeons. They were the first governors, the first rulers, uh, the first men and women to orient structures to celestial bodies in order to harness the spiritual energy that's generated uh, within a structure that is properly aligned to celestial spheres. So in other words, they were human beings who knew how to manifest the power of God on earth. Come.